Calling all nerds, welcome to the Chatting Chat Dot, your cozy little corner for all things Pokemon. I'm your host, Tyler, aka Mr. Teenager. Today we have a great second episode of this little series that we're doing. Uh, I have actually interviewed my friend Joe the other day, and we just kind of went over Pokemon, as you would expect. <laughs> so we will be cutting over to that interview at the end of the podcast. But before we get into it, uh, we do have a couple little things happening in the news world of Pokemon, uh, primarily with Pokemon Go and a little bit of the core game. Actually, you know, we don't really have that much, so you'll hear the interview very soon. Uh, but yeah, so second episode, really excited about this. Really glad that I was able to find someone who was willing to hop on. We got on a Discord call. We just chatted a little bit. I asked him questions very similar to the ones that I asked in the first episode. So hopefully you listen to that. Uh, but yeah, so this is the Chatting Chat Tot. This is episode two. If this is the first time that you're listening, uh, my name is Tyler. I host this and I am a co I don't know, creator, founder, whatever it might be called of the podcasting team calling all nerds, me and my brother-in-law, Max, we have started this. You can also listen to our other podcast called the Nerd Alert uh, podcast. It's Well, it's like calling all nerds. No, wait, it's it's Nerd Alert brought to you by Calling All Nerds. So this is Chatting Chat Hot brought to you by Calling All Nerds. That's like the vibe we go for. So if this is the first time you're listening to this, uh, Chatting Chat Hot is specifically about Pokemon. Nerd Alert is about all things nerdy. So be sure to check out that as well. Uh, but yeah, so this is the first time listening. I appreciate you uh, just kind of sitting around or maybe you're driving, you know, maybe you're relaxing in a cozy chair. Maybe you're sipping some coffee, staring out into the distance and you have a view of a beautiful lake. I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. <laughs> so I think it is time for some news. Uh, in the Pokemon Go space, looks like Mega Gardevoir is making a debut here soon. Uh, so that's pretty exciting if you're into Mega Gardevoir. That is coming here shortly, so get pretty hyped for that. Uh, but honestly, a big thing that I was noting, that I at least wrote down that I was excited about, is on February 6th, there are now save the dates. Not for a wedding, but for next season's community days. Uh, so let's see. Now that the final community day season of or the final community day of season nine, Mythical Wishes is behind us. We like to share next season's community day dates. Those are Saturday, March 18th, 2023, Saturday, April 15th, 2023, Saturday, April 29th, 2023, and it's a community day classic, is what it says in parentheses. And then Sunday, May 21st, 2023. Uh, community days aren't the only events on the horizon. Here are dates for additional in-game events coming next season. We have Sunday, March 5th, Saturday, March 11th, Sunday, April 9th, Sunday, April 23rd, and then Saturday, May 27th to, sa to Sunday, May 28th. Uh, so I'm just assuming those are other pretty fun events. And they didn't really give too much else outside of that. But it's exciting to know that, you know, more community days are coming. I mean, obviously, you know, they're not just going to take away community days. But if you are into playing Pokemon Go, uh, those are your next kind of dates to be on the horizon. So the next one is actually March 5th, a non-community day. It's just sort of an in-game event. Uh, so that'd be the next one. So get excited for that. I pretty much only play Pokemon Go for Community Day. So you will see me, or maybe not, uh, but you'll see me out there March 18th catching some Pokemon. Uh, and then the only real news that I could see for the core games being Scarlet and Violet were kind of just two things. Uh, one is that there's some rumors that maybe there'll be some potential news of DLC coming for Scarlet and Violet, and it could you know, it could be talked about on Pokemon Day, which is the 27th of February, but no one is, no one is certain. It's just, you know, everybody always has like, oh, I think this is it. Oh, I think this is it. I, you know, rumors this, rumors that. So there's just been some leakers that are posting some strange, you know, DLC teasers. Take those with a grain of salt, if you will. Uh, but that could, you never know, February 27th, hopefully we will be, uh, 
doing some cool podcasting on that and give our little thoughts on there. So that'll become. And then if you are listening to this, uh, the day that I release this podcast, which will be the 11th of February right now, Greninja is out again for the final time as a terror raid battle in Scarlet and Violet. So if you're listening to this either on the 11th or the 12th of February, 2023, uh, you still have a chance to get it. If you're listening to this in the future, well, hopefully you got it. And if you didn't, well, maybe you didn't want to get it, <laughs> but that was, that's pretty much it. Uh, and then for Pokemon cards, I don't have too much news. Crown Zenith is amazing. I'm still trying to uh, get more cards so I can make more videos. Uh, and that's really all that I have for that. So that's our new segment, pretty short and sweet. Cause honestly the Joe segment of this, of this portion was really fun. So let's just kind of kick right in and transition over to the interview. Who's that interviewee? It's Joe. Joe. What's going on, folks? Welcome back to the Who's That Interviewee section. I'm joined by my friend here, Joe, or Joe the Joe, if you will. Uh, more on that after later when he tells you his credentials and all that good fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, so this is uh, episode two of the podcast and our very first ever interviewee, my friend Joe. Say hello, Joe. Hello, Joe. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> uh, so Joe and I, we met... Crazy enough, it's actually been over seven years now, which is kind of wild to think about. Uh, I met him back at God my... World. Yeah, that actually feels kind of crazy that it's been seven <laughs> years. What the heck? Uh, I met Joe at my first you? job. Yeah, 2016. Like, really? Yeah. I didn't think you started that I, that soon. I thought it was like 2018. No, yeah. The internship Dang. was 2016. And... I was invited to lunch with Joe's boss and obviously <laughs> Joe and I saw him play Pokemon go. And I yeah. also saw him be on team valor. Honestly, yeah. all signs point to yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Joe, he has done some content creating. Do you still do content creating? I haven't touched it in a bit. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess I could just introduce myself. Yeah, tell really us quick. your credentials, man. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm Joe the Joe, or just Joe for short, um, based off my real name, of course, which is Joe. <laughs> um, and one of these days, I'm just going to tell people, no, my name is like you know Robert or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I sort of got into just streaming, content creation, YouTube, all that stuff. Uh, back in like 20, I want to say 14, um, I started a YouTube channel uh, with my friend uh, who I'm still friends with, but he handles the channel now and he does like Elder Scrolls Online with it. Um, and then kind of dropped that for a while. And then, you know, I've always been a fan of Pokemon and stuff. And, you know, I watched the anime growing up as a kid. I played like pretty much all the games except for Gen 5 and 6 because I hated Gen 5. And then <laughs> Gen 6 like brought me back because that's when the anime was just like absolutely like amazing. And also that's when Pokemon Go came out. Um, and Ash actually made it to the finals of the Pokemon League for once um, instead of losing like the top 16 or whatever. Um, and so Pokemon Go got me back into Pokemon after Gen 5. And I loved like 1 through 4. And I played the crap out of all of those. Um, Gen 5, I, I just couldn't get into. Um, but I came back to Pokemon through Pokemon Go um, back in 2016. And um, or whatever year it was. And then... Um, I eventually started to try and make Pokemon content on a, on like my own YouTube channel. And then I stopped <laughs> because <laughs> I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. Yeah. Um, and I haven't really streamed or made videos or anything in a while, yeah. but it is funny that like, so I've, I think I made like 20, 21 videos on that channel and it's been like a while since I've done anything with it, but I still like get like random notifications like every now and then of people like commenting or like subscribing <laughs> and stuff. And it's funny because like over the past like month, the subscriber count has slowly ticked up like one by one. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, <laughs> I'm not even here. Like, That's hello? amazing. <laughs> That's so cool. What about the yeah. um, what about the art stuff? I remember you were getting really into um, doing like art streams and stuff like that. Are you still drawing and everything? 
Yeah, I still draw. Um, yeah, that's cool. Not as much as I want to. Yeah. Um, uh 2021 i set a goal for myself because i started art like seriously in like 2019 but i didn't really i was still a beginner so i didn't really accomplish much um and then in 2020 no i guess it was 2020 i started seriously and then 2021 i set a goal for myself to draw at least one full piece a month because i was still oh, new I and that. i do remember yeah that. i was still new and very slow so it took me like a month to get everything like just right or at least close enough to just right to where i would be satisfied with it and I more or less met that goal. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I'm like, cool, I did that. And then I just kind of like <laughs> chilled <laughs> for a bit. Like, I think I drew like two full pieces last year, maybe yeah. if that. Um, so I'm trying to get back into that a little bit more. Um, my whole problem is like, I want to do YouTube again and like streaming and stuff, but I also want to do art, but I also just want to enjoy games and play them. And I also yeah. want to like do this and that. So it's like, it's like decision paralysis or I think it's called or something like that. But yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Cause I, I'm in the same boat, you know, like I, I did a lot of streaming, not so much YouTube. And mm -hmm. then I started realizing that like the live streaming is fun, but I find that doing the YouTube stuff, like I'm doing all my shorts now. I'm, I mean, I'm doing this podcast. We're not doing it live or anything. And like, yeah, I like to be able to do it on my own time whenever, because I find that I always get time to do things very just randomly, but not always can I just randomly start streaming. <laughs> it's like, right. it's like the time doesn't work out. Maybe I only have like this 30 minutes and so I've like, I've shifted and then it's like, well, I like, I like doing this stuff. I like doing that stuff. And yeah, trying to like piece everything together. It's, it can be a little tough, but I mean, as long as, you know, as long as you're having fun, like I, mm -hmm. I had a hard time transitioning from streaming to just playing games on my own. And now I'm just like, you know what? I just like playing games on my own. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't always have to stream. them. I'll do it every now and then just to try to bring some people into the YouTube channel, but playing games, yeah. man, it's just, it's just fun. It's kind of nice not having to like, be on a camera or constantly talk because a lot of times i'm silent i'm just gaming i don't, I don't mm -hmm. need to talk yeah but that's cool yep. well i'm glad that uh you know i'm glad that you are still drawing i'm glad that obviously you are still a pokemon fan or else this interview would be awkward <laughs> <laughs> you said pokemon sorry i thought you said digimon <laughs> <laughs> hey digimon's still pretty <laughs> solid there's some haters out there digimon. oh man if it wasn't for the intro i think a lot more people would like digimon <laughs> Um, so what, what was, um, what came first, the chicken? The, no, what, what came first? Was it playing a game? Was it watching the anime? Was it like playing the card gamer or just collecting cards? Like what, what was the thing that like pulled you into Pokemon in the beginning? So I'm pretty sure my first memory is the anime and the mm. reason I even knew about it was because I was like six years old. So I was like in like kindergarten and just one day randomly like coming home from school maybe it was like first grade i don't remember it was i was super super young um and one day coming home from school my best friend derek just randomly was like joey you need to turn on um you know channel whatever like channel four at like three o'clock today when you go home and i was like okay so i did and pokemon was on and i was like whoa this is so cool and i don't <laughs> remember like anything about like after that, I just remember him telling me that. And then like, I just loved Pokemon after that. Um, so then eventually, like, I guess from that, then my, I guess my parents got me like a Game Boy and like the, you know, red and blue and stuff. And then they got me yellow as well. And I freaking, I love yellow. Like, oh. I love Gen 1 as a whole, but I love yellow, especially so um, good. just because like, it's the one game where you can get all of the starters mm -hmm. and it's Pikachu follows you, which is mm -hmm. like so freaking cool um it was the closest thing we got to ash i felt like yeah like yeah, so much of it was like ash doesn't exist in the pokemon universe but yellow yeah. was like kind of ash is existing yeah, they basically made it to be more closely tied to the anime um nowadays that's not really true anymore i guess mm -hmm. or i guess maybe in the future it might be because we're not gonna have ash anymore but, yeah um, true what they'll do <laughs> but yeah um played i played through gen one a lot because gen two or anything else hadn't come out yet um but i never beat gen one as a kid and Same. a big reason for a big reason for that is well two reasons one i have a younger sister and as many people might know who have younger siblings they're brats and they suck <laughs> um so 
<laughs> but I also partially blame Nintendo for this because they made Legend of Zelda where you have save files and like multiple save files or whatever, I think. But Pokemon doesn't have that for some reason. Mm. Um, so she would just randomly like once a month or twice a month or whatever, be like, I want to play Pokemon. And we only had the one Game Boy, mine. And um, she would always want to play the version that I was playing. Of course. And I'd be like, all right, fine, but don't save it because if you save it, it overwrites. So she would start a new game. And of course, you know, she gets like route one, maybe get to the first gym if she like played long enough, but she never played for like more than an hour really. And then she would save it and I would just lose like all my progress. <laughs> oh, and this happened multiple times. And it wasn't because like I was just a nice guy. I was like, no, she's going to do this again. It was like, at first it was like my parents were like, oh let her you have to share you know like sharing is caring all that stuff and but i kept telling them and they were like okay well instead of just like you know telling her no or getting her her own game boy they're like okay remember don't save and like she would just save anyways and there's no punishment for it so like even to this day I, the closest i ever got to beating pokemon yellow was i had a <laughs> i basically soloed every day with my starter so oh, Pikachu yeah. was like level like 98 or 89 or something like that. And my the rest of my team was like level 30 something. And I was at Lance. And Dang. I, and I managed to beat Lance, but then Gary's next. And his first oh, yeah. Pokemon is like Exeggutor, I think. I think and so. a, as a grass type, it resists all your electric type moves. Um, and I was I always had Pikachu learn Thundershock, Thunder, Thunderbolt, and Thunder Wave. Just pure electric. straight power, baby. Raw yeah, power. <laughs> so, so Pikachu was useless against Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much all of Bruno's team, too, or at least half of it, because he has two Onyxes for some reason or whatever. Um, so yeah. Um, but another reason for Gen 1 being difficult for me was I always thought, like, up until like the Pokemon Go era, really. I always thought Rock was immune to electric because Brock's Pokemon are rock types and he's mm. a rock type champion. I'm like, oh, electric doesn't work. Okay. Obviously, they're rock types. So, rock type is immune. And then later you meet like Diglett or whatever, Cubone, and it's like, oh, ground is also immune. Okay. I never knew that Brock's Pokemon were rock and ground types. So, I would always struggle against them at when Pokemon Yellow or like if I picked Charmander for my starter in red and blue. Um, so that was another reason, like I would struggle to just like start the game. Yeah. <laughs> so do you feel like um, you had a good concept of like gaming and like how to play the game of like tight matchups and doing that whole, I didn't, I was dumb. I had no <laughs> idea what video games were when I was a kid. <laughs> I felt like I would, I think I beat Brock 80 times cause I kept restarting my game all the time. I, I didn't comprehend progression as a kid. To a degree I did. Um, like I'm like. Like they kind of teach you the basics, like, you know, fire beats grass, grass beats water, water yeah. beats fire. Yeah. So like stuff like that I knew. But like some of the more like intricate ones, like um ground is like ground, I guess, being immune to electric, they kind of teach you, or like the anime taught me. Um like the psychic dark like, ghost stuff. Like all yeah, those like, always was confusing. Like poison. Ghost psychic, I had no idea. Poison psychic, like anything psychic. I knew it was like good against fighting, that was about it. Yeah. Um I knew flying was good against fighting um and grass and bug but then like poison and like rock and like i knew rock was good against fire because charmander would get wrecked um True. but but like all those other ones i didn't really know and it wasn't until like i don't know maybe maybe it was after gen 2 came out that i was just playing through gen 1 again for whatever reason and I was playing Pokemon Yellow, and I'm like, well, I have this my Pikachu, but I can't use Thunder Wave because they're rock types, so they're immune to it. Um, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I can get a Butterfree, and it'll learn Stun Spore when it evolves into Butterfree, and then I can paralyze them that way. Butterfree also learns Confusion at level 10 or 12 <laughs> or something. So I figured out that way that I could just sweep his team with Butterfree. Yeah. Um, and then that kind of opened my eyes a little bit more. Um, yeah, yeah I, like especially with like um dark types i had no idea like in gen 2 i knew steel was weak against fire but dark types i had no idea what the heck to do yeah um, and in, in pokemon stadium 2 there's like the whole like gym leader section thing you can do mm -hmm. and the last guy on the elite four or whatever has a tyranitar and i could not beat that tyranitar like i knew it was rock type i think i knew it was rock type anyways but i oh, but i didn't know like what dark was weak against yeah so yeah. i just i could never beat it 
And through sheer luck, I was like, well, let me just try and teach my Typhlosion dynamic punch because I know it's uh, rock type, so it's weak to fighting. Little did I know that even though dynamic punch is only 50% accurate, it's also like stupid strong. And yeah. the and Titar is four type. times weak to fighting yeah. type. So yeah. it one shot Titar. I was like, oh, that's what's good against Dark type. <laughs> Bro, speaking of Tyranitar, you remember us uh, when Pokemon Go first launched raids? And oh we went God. like under an underpass and then like climbed yes. up a hill to like the side <laughs> yes. of the road to battle yes. this Tyranitar with like 40 I other remember people. that. And you caught it too. I did, yeah. I, I didn't though, which sucked. I was like, oh man. Bro, we did a lot of work to get to that thing. It was sketch. We like <laughs> parked somewhere, paid for parking, and then we're walking trying to find it. Dude, that's what Pokemon's about, man. Just wandering, getting lost on adventures. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it was it was pretty cool doing those raids. Pokemon Go was yeah. it was really fun. It was a fun time. Yeah. Yeah, I remember so I remember going back to Gen 1. I'm going to say recently. I'll, I'll say that I was probably 16 or older, so I'll just say recently, mm-hmm. I guess, but I remember I was playing through it and I I had never cuz you know, I never beat the game. So mm-hmm. I never really went to the Victory Road route that's right there by Brock's, you know, stadium yeah. and everything. Yeah. And I've never noticed that there was a Mankey there. So I'm mm-hmm. over here playing old, you know, older person, older Tyler walking around and I see the Mankey and I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so there was a fighting type less than like 300 pixels away from Brock's gym. And I never, I, never I used to always train um, my Pikachu up or like a Caterpie up or a Butterfree up or do some just annoying thing of like training and training and training and training and training. And I never realized that there was a Mankey just right Mm -hmm. there. And I was like, wow, I cannot believe that it took me till I was, you know, 16 or older to finally find this Mankey. But it's it's fun when you go back to like games again, older games and like when you realize that you missed a lot of things as a kid. Uh, I read more dialogue now. And so I'm like, (laughs) oh, this is like a lot more fun, like little things around the game that like goofy people say. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. Gen 1 is a good one. And yellow is amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Another thing with that little patch of grass too, you can find Nidoran there. Um, mm. and they learn double kick at like level seven or something. And the game really tries yeah. to let you know it's possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're like, over here with our Pikachu's. Come on, die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, part of it's also like, oh, my starter is so cool. Why would I ever use these other Pokemon? Like, I'll catch them, but like, yeah, there's, whatever. I'll just leave them level four, like whatever. <laughs> and then all they know is Poison Sting, which doesn't do anything. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, I guess I'll just die now. <laughs> so did you, so you watched the anime, you played the game. Yeah. Did you did you get into the trifecta? Did you do the cards at all, whether collecting or playing or anything like that? Yeah, so I collected a good bit as a kid. Um See, where do I even start with that? I don't even know. I guess just at some point. So like my dad likes to collect coins. So he kind of, I guess, initiated that for me. Like maybe, okay. you know, he got me my first booster pack or something. I don't have an exact memory of that, but um, he helped a lot with like, just like sorting that and stuff, like putting them all like alphabetically in a binder. So they're more easy to find and stuff. And then um, I ended up getting four holographic Charizards, like not all at once, but like over the course of like, you know, before Gen 2 came out and stuff. Mm. Um, unfortunately, none of them are first edition, so they're not worth much, but yeah. um, it's still kind of cool to have four holographic Charizards. Oh, for sure. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> and I remember one of my friends growing up had a birthday party and like, you know, every kid gets like a little gift bag when they even in the bag was like a pack of Pokemon cards. And that's where I got like my second one. And I was like, oh, I already have one. Here you go. Um, and my dad, <laughs> I like got in the car and my dad was like, where are your Pokemon cards? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I, gave him, I gave him to John because, you know, I already had a Charizard. He's like, go get it back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're dead when you take being, back the card. <laughs> so despite it being his birthday party, <laughs> I went back and took the cards. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I so. cannot believe your dad is the one to be like, what are you doing? Go back in that car. Go get that card. <laughs> but yeah. Um so you done any recently? <laughs> um have I collected any recently? Yeah, yeah. Like you still collect um, it all or not much? I don't really collect, not like you anyways. Um mm. 
the last packs that I opened were like this Halloween one that they did last year. Um, but like, it was like a, it literally looks like a candy bag. <laughs> and I was like, wait, it's like just Pokemon oh, candy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, that one. Yep. And there's like, I don't know, like there's like 40 packs in there or something. I opened half of them and I'm pretty sure I got all the cards in the set that you can get in there. Mm-hmm. And the other half are just sitting here. I'm like, I don't need to open these and just take up more space. Um, but yeah, as a kid, I, I mostly collected. I There was a Wizards of the Coast um, in our mall that I went to, you know, whenever we went to the mall, I would always go there. And I did play in like one little, like, like I guess, locals tournament there. Um, and I remember this was like after the second movie came out, I think. And I actually like won a, a match and got like this cool, like, promo Electabuzz, which is pretty Ooh, cool. That's cool. Um, and I remember that there was this one guy who was just sweeping people with a lick tongue <laughs> um, which is like really funny to think about because it's lick tongue yeah. um, and I was like the one guy who actually beat him. I don't know how I did it or what I did but I won and I got a promo Electabuzz for it so I, I must have done something right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't really play much of the card game after that or yeah. at all really um, and now it's like I feel like it's totally different from what it was back then too so I'd have no idea what I was what I'd do. Um yeah, the but cards yeah. are a lot beefier. They got all mm-hmm. the like, you know, GX cards or V cards. Yeah. They take two prizes, sometimes three prize cards, and then you know, yeah. there's all the different like conditions. I mean, it's still definitely a pretty original format, but mm-hmm. like any card games, things evolve a lot, and they definitely change from like when we've originally played them. Like like Yu Gi Oh, Yu Gi Oh's oh, changed yeah. drastically. I mean, yeah, the way you played it originally to now with having like. Get like 80 different spare decks and you're like special <laughs> summoning up the butt so it's yeah, yeah it's it's a, it's a it's definitely a little bit different that's cool that you had a um wizard of the coast though an actual store yeah i didn't they know they had um, i didn't know they had like actual brick and mortar shops yeah it was just in the mall though it wasn't like its own thing but they did eventually close down probably because their prices were really high and mm. i think there was like a toys r us in the same mall that like sold cards for cheaper oh so, yeah why yeah, go there yeah. Get it to them. yeah um <laughs> now look at where toys r us is at aren't they like inside <laughs> know, of right? macy's or something like that now probably i don't even know um but it is funny looking at cards nowadays because like you look at cards from like you know the first set or whatever and it's like oh charizard it has like 80 health and charizard now is like 220 it's like <laughs> yeah <"What> the <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they would stand no chance having like older cards because I mean, like basic Pokemon, it'd be like, oh, we have 30 health. Yeah. It's like basic Pokemon nowadays have like 60 yeah. to 70 health and their yeah. attacks do like 40 damage, whereas basic before did 10. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do you know about anything about fossils for right now? Because I remember like back in the day, you had to like play this basic fossil card with like 20 hit points and then evolve that into the fossil Pokemon. Yeah, I... You know, I haven't actually seen a fossil Pokemon in a while. I'm not sure if they're still um, still doing it the same way. Because okay. um, when I, you know, I'm actually, just, I'm kind of just like Googling it right now, looking at different fossil Pokemon. <laughs> I feel like I haven't, I haven't seen like a trainer card of a fossil in a good while. I'm not, oh, here we go. So... Okay, yeah. So that Arc Arctazolt, one of the weird mm-hmm. combination ones. Yeah. It does say that it evolves from a rare fossil, which I'm assuming is just a regular trainer card. So it looks like they are still uh keeping suit with that. But I mm. you know, I can't imagine like it's the most competitive thing. I also yeah. you know, the weird thing too nowadays with like the Pokemon card game is when you have cards like GXs or EXs or Vs and V Stars and all that. They can be, you know, stage two Pokemon, but you don't need to evolve them. Like you just play them right away. So I oh, feel okay. like if they were to make, let's just take Arctazolt as an mm-hmm. example. If they were going to make him maybe something pretty decent in a competitive scene, he'd probably be like a V card anyways. And then you would just play him like you wouldn't need to evolve or anything. So like gotcha. a like a Charizard, you can you can literally if you pull it, if you have a Charizard GX in your hand and it's the only basic Pokemon in your hand, that's the first card you're playing. <laughs> so that's like <laughs> that's how you're starting the the game off with. So it's it's kind of interesting. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah, the cards cards are fun. So you play the games, 
did a little bit of collecting. You said you like the anime, so like, yeah, I know it may be hard to like think of. So I won't ask like what you liked about the anime before. I'm just gonna kind of just ask now, like, what about the anime do you enjoy? Like, what what about what elements of it that have just kind of kept you? Because you still watch, like me, we're still into it. I mean, maybe yeah. not as actively as we were as kids, but like I know you watch it, I watch it, like. What about it still has that charm to you? Um, so I will answer the question of like, I'll, I'll answer both like then and now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So starting with, starting with then, it was just freaking cool. You know, it's classic mm. like 90s, early 2000s. Like I love that style too. Um, but it was also just like a lot more loose and like free back then. Like you had random like one-off episodes where like Ash gets turned into a Pikachu for an episode. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Then, I remember which is like so cool. Like let yeah. me do that in the game or something. Um, and then just like all these, you had like such random things happening and stuff. Um, like Squirtle squad. I mean, that was yeah. awesome. That whole they're Squirtle coming, squad was back. great. I know. For the next episode. That's I'm so sorry. exciting. Um, but yeah, like I loved a lot of it. And then eventually what what kind of put me off of it was Gen 5 because mm. that was sort of like a soft reset for the whole franchise. Yeah. Um, but also at some point, so they did, you know, Gen 1, 2, Gen 3. Um, and then they, between Gen 3 and 4, they also did the Battle Frontier with like the eight Frontier Brains. And they basically, that was when... Um, four kids lost the license to Pokemon because that's when the Pokemon company was made. So they decided to start producing like the English dub and stuff. So all the dub actors that we grew up with like were replaced. Um, so that's where like Sarah Nata Chenny got her start as Ash and stuff. Oh. Um, and the voices were so bad. <laughs> like starting yeah. off, they're so bad. She She's much better now. Um, but she's no Veronica Taylor in my book. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like the the voice change was just so weird because it was literally like they did the first frontier brain with the four kids dub. And then they went all the way up to the episode before the second frontier brain with the four kids dub. And then as soon as you get to the second frontier brain, it switches and it's just, it's so That's jarring. Weird disconnect. Like, if they at least started the frontier brain saga with like new actors, it wouldn't be as bad, but mm -hmm. it was just like in the middle of it. And I'm like, what the heck? Um, so that was like a little weird. Um, and then, but like, they still had hype moments. Like you have, um, I always loved the Indigo League battle between Ash and Gary, um, because he, he finally beats Gary, but it's also Charizard versus Blastoise. Um, and it's such like an iconic, like battle. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just love, I always love the way Ash battles too, like his ingenuity, um, sprinkler memes aside, like some of the stuff he does in like sort of later seasons where it's like <clears throat> he teaches like the counter shield to his pokemon where they sort of break dance and shoot out water or electricity or whatever and like it shields them from whatever attack and it's also like offensive at the same time which is really cool and just weird things like that that he does i always loved about the anime um and again yeah, like those combat in the anime things. is awesome Com yeah. like anime combat is so uh, you know they, yeah. they truly wouldn't be able to do that in a game i think it's like way too complex of what they do but the, I yeah, think the combat's could, awesome. I think, think? okay, uh, imagine that I've always wanted this as a game. So like, okay, I've wanted two of these things for, as a game. One where it's like, hey, you Pikachu, but like better, where like mm -hmm. you actually voice out like, Pikachu, use Thunderbolt and, and dodge it and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it actually does that. <clears throat> Obviously couldn't really do that in like the early 2000s. Nowadays, you could probably do something to that effect. But I think what would be really cool now is having like a Pokemon game Maybe like Gen 10, for example, um, Pokemon game where you you run around the world as like your player character, but then when you go into battle, you battle as your Pokemon. I think that'd be sick. <clears throat> like, so like you're you get, controlling the moves, kind of like in Unite. Yeah, yeah. So like you like move oh. around as the Pokemon, so you can like dodge, you can shoot out whatever you know your Hydro Pump or whatever the heck. Yeah, I think that'd be really freaking cool. Um, yeah, could then, you imagine if there yeah. was like terrain manipulation and stuff like let's say mm -hmm. you're on a battle and you know like someone like the other opponent uses earthquake and it actually like cracks yeah. open parts of like your map area now you have to like yeah. jump over it or if they do like a mud or like a rock throw 
but then if you mm-hmm. water beam like the rock it like kind of destroys the rock like that'd be that'd be pretty interesting if it like actually tried to utilize the surrounding yeah. area too because i know like take the um the fight i can't remember if it i always get this mixed up because i i watched so much of both there was like the youtube one following red and then there was ash versus oh, brock yeah. i can't remember which Origins. one this was from but it was like one of them had their pokemon hit the sprinklers to that weaken the ash. that was ash okay yeah like how cool of a concept would that be if you could do something right <laughs> like i'm gonna attack something in my area that's gonna have an effect onto you as the pokemon because it, yeah. you know, it makes sense. I mean, we have Pokemon battles literally inside of buildings in the Pokemon <laughs> games, and it makes no sense how things yeah. are. Like, remember all the memes that came out during uh, Sword and Shield for the Gigantamaxing <laughs> in the stadium and, like, yep. what the audience would actually be like? <laughs> it would just know, be right? mass destruction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think another thing that would be cool with like environmental stuff, like imagine ice beam on the ground. Now the, the ground is ice oh, and you yeah. can like slide across it or something. Yep. That'd be really cool. Um, and then as for the anime now, I didn't care for, for black and white, the anime. I didn't care for gen five. Um, silent was just like a knockoff rock. I didn't care for Iris's design. Um, uh, I just thought her having like more hair than her body was like stupid. Um, <laughs> I loved, I liked, Sorry, I liked Goku. her as like a character. <laughs> yeah, Goku makes it look cool though. <laughs> um, but I like her character and I like that act you like lived in her hair. That was always kind of cool. Cause it was like, it was always out of his Pokeball. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cute. But I, I didn't care for gen five, but gen six, like, I didn't really pay attention to it till like Pokemon go got me back into Pokemon in general. And then like, you know, people online were like, just like freaking out about like, Oh my God, like the animation is so good. And like ashes and like, you know, the top four of the Pokemon league or whatever. I was like, wait, what? And like, that's also when mega evolutions were out and stuff. So oh, like gosh, ev- everything just like came together for that, like series to be just amazing. Yeah. And I don't know if we'll ever have like, like an anime that was animated as well as gen six. Um, Cause like, Oh my gosh. I've rewatched so, like so many of those battles just because the animation was so good. Was that the one with <clears throat> Mega Gyarados with Misty versus Ash? That one was Gen 7. I really like that mm. one too, though. Um, <clears throat> I didn't like how they designed Ash. It's weird because oh, yeah, like, he's was... the only one that like looks like that and everyone else kind of looks normal. <clears throat> or like at least in like they look more like their current versions. But like Ash, like just changed so drastically. Yeah, um, they did. They did like swap him a lot with like his his facial and like look yeah. and everything like that. I am, I am going through that one right now, mm-hmm. uh, slowly. But yeah, he he stands out in an odd way. It's almost yeah. like it's like he's the. And I don't know if they did it in the sense of like, oh well, like he doesn't live on the island. And so mm. let's make him stand out. But I'm kind of just like, yeah, but almost his whole character model looks weird. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. understand. He looks like a cartoon character in an anime. <laughs> yeah, he does. He it's so does. weird. That's a great description <laughs> of it. Yeah. Um, but I do enjoy the battles in, in Sun and Moon as well. Like, I love the Misty versus Ash rematch. I think that one's really cool. Um, and that has another one of my favorite things where, like, Ash just like pulls off shenanigans to win the battle. Like, have you seen that battle, right? I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, I just love how Misty's like, Gyarados, use Hurricane. So it does. Pikachu's like trapped. So he he's, he tries Thunderbolt. Of course, it doesn't work because why would it? And then he's like, all right, we'll just jump off the lightning. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> and he gets out. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then Journeys, I so I never really watched any of like, I came in at the very end of Gen 6 of the Pokemon League, basically. So I saw all that hype stuff. Like, Greninja vs. Sceptile is probably my favorite battle out of the whole thing. Oh, yeah, that's um, good I didn't really watch Gen 7 that much. Just, like, some of like, the highlight parts, like, you know, some of the um, Kahuna battles and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, Journeys, I watched a little bit of. A little bit in the beginning, um, especially because you see Pikachu's origin, which is, like, so adorable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then more towards the end where they did like the whole masters tournament and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I freaking cried like a baby when he freaking won, <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm still mad about that because so for me, I watched the episodes on, on YouTube and um, the, the episodes kind of come out, you know, 
a little earlier in Japan than they do for everywhere else mm -hmm. because that's where they air and it takes time to translate and stuff. Um, and the official Pokemon account was the first thing that I saw on Twitter and they were like, congratulations, Ash. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Son it, of a like, <laughs> it was like 8.30 in the morning and like, I had just gotten like an org or something. I'm like, are you kidding me? Did they really just spoil the anime for the whole oh, world? Oh, that's brutal. So, so I was I was mad about that, but the episode was just so good and still like emotional that like I don't care as much, but I'm still mad about it. So <laughs> what what did you think of yeah. Go? Did you like Go? Yeah, I like Go because he's kind of like early Ash, where he doesn't know a whole lot, and then like mm. Ash becomes like the teacher. Um, he grew on me. It took me a while. Yeah, at first yeah, I was he's like. Ugh. Yeah, that's how I felt too. Like at first I was like, eh, he's kind of annoying and stuff. But then like later, like, especially like towards the end, he's like a lot more bearable and stuff. So, and it, it's cool too. Cause it's like in journeys, they, you know, actually like formally address shiny Pokemon and also mm -hmm. like they catch legendaries, which is cool. Like go as a Suicune. Um, Gosh, it's so awesome. Yeah. I he, know, like, it's, he's a good yeah. trainer. He is like he genuinely is. a good trainer. And yeah, it was it was fun. I think I also enjoyed that it was mainly them as a duo in mm -hmm. journeys. Like that was a cool experience to see. And then just watching Go just actually be someone who was good mm -hmm. at like catching Pokemon. And then Ash, they finally gave him such a cool team. <laughs> it was like <laughs> Ash finally started evolving Pokemon for his for his party, and it was so yeah. awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, I like that. Go was actually trying to catch them all. Yeah, um, and then I I always did think it was funny. His name is Go because like. <laughs> Pokemon Go yeah. and Go, and then it's like, let's go, go. That, that like, had to be that had to yeah. be some type of influence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I love I like Ash's team a lot, even though like you look at it from like just like on paper, and it's just like horribly unbalanced. It's like yeah, here's like two dragons, here's two like fighting types, you know, here's like all these Pokemon that are like weak to fairy types by themselves and stuff. And <laughs> it, it does kind of suck that he only has like two Gen Eight Pokemon on his team even though it's not technically like a gen 8 anime like it's not like you know pokemon galar adventures it's pokemon journeys but like yeah. i still i still do like the team i love his dragonite the most i think yeah like when you see him having like gengar for example i'm like man mm -hmm. that would have been cool if he had a gengar before yeah or like I mean, he, he borrowed haunter that one time <laughs> he did yeah. yeah didn't didn't go too long <laughs> yeah. and like yeah. it was just cool to finally see ash get more than just you know, like his Grid Ninja was his star pupil, mm -hmm. right? And it was like yeah. he finally had more than just that, which was just fun to see. I mean, I I don't like Darkavish. I think those fossil <laughs> Pokemon were just really dumb. But outside of that, I mean, you know, when you look at when you look at the photo of like Ash winning World Champs, yeah, he looks. Yeah. His whole team looks excited, and it's like it's like little things like that that make the anime be like, oh yeah, this is. This is why it's just like really fun. And it funny enough, pun intended, I guess it really is a journey. I mean, mm -hmm. you talked about how you started watching Pokemon probably around, you know, age six. I think, I think you're like a year, maybe a year older than me. I'm pretty sure. And so we were around the same age though. And it's like, we had Ash growing up and now it's like that part's over. Like the, mm -hmm. the Ash era is, is done. And, I mean, I know there's rumors of people wondering, hey, is this new person on the block going to be like Ash's child or something like that? Yeah. I mean, would be cool. I had no idea. I'm, I'm totally mm. for that that theory. But yeah, it's ex it's exciting and it's cool that, you know, it's cool that the game, the card game and the anime, pretty much there are three main mediums, if you know, maybe the only ones they have. It's cool to hear that like all three of those were something that you got enjoyment out of. I feel like there's a lot of things out there that people try to do multiple things of and it just doesn't always click with everybody. Yeah. Um, like I'll use Yu-Gi-Oh as an example. You know, I liked playing the game. I kind of like watching the show, but I didn't like the video games. I just didn't think they were fun. And then as I got older, I liked the video mm -hmm. games more, hated playing the card game, <laughs> never watched the show. <laughs> so it's like, there's yeah. so, but it's never always the trifecta. Whereas like with Pokemon, yeah. it seems like whether I'm watching 
the random YouTube videos that they make or like these off series, you know, I like to watch something anime related Pokemon uh, card yeah. game, love collecting them. Pokemon games. There's, there's a miss here and there for sure. Mm-hmm. But like, at least right now with like Scarlet and Violet and like how Arceus was and stuff, it's, it's cool that their whole ecosystem is enjoyable for the most part. Yeah. They definitely have like the magic formula. Um, and it is it is weird to think that like it's all gonna change technically but like Mm. technically not you know and like i think it's like there's only like seven episodes left of the anime for ash Mm -hmm. um so it'll be really interesting to see like how that affects everything else if it affects any everything else at all um yeah i i do think they probably will go with the child route just because the similarities are there and like it makes mm. sense right like you know the, all these people grew up with ash now they're going to essentially make him a grown up and then yeah. the next generation gets to grow up with his child so like yeah. you're still continuing that like the catch him you know lineage or whatever um and this way like ash isn't gone he's just not the main character anymore so that's i do think that's what they'll do i i'd be okay if they don't but i think mm. they'd be stupid to not um, and they're definitely not stupid considering they're the largest franchise in the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, this generation, especially gen nine has been like so huge for them too. Cause Scarlet Violet is such a huge departure from like anything that they've done really. Um, cause like there's legends Arceus. Sure. But like, even that's just like each area is like closed off. Like it's its own like separate area Yeah, they are just, like, room between them. Yeah. So um with scarlet violet i I think like the future is gonna be like insane for pokemon um and i think it'll be insane for a lot of people too because this is actually the first generation where i actually completed the pokedex in you know 25 years of playing or whatever Mm. um i started to do it in gen 8 and then i just got bored (laughs) because there's so much work yeah um but here it felt kind of easy just because like you know, half the half of my gameplay hours were just roaming around catching stuff and finding items. It wasn't even like doing the gyms or whatever. Um, whereas Galar was still more like linear and everything. Um, and I actually found this out like last week. They're having a regional in Charlotte. So I might actually participate in that. Oh, that's I've been cool. Playing, I've been getting into VGC this gen. I, I watched it last generation um people hate on dynamax because it's stupid and i agree it is like really like it looks stupid yep. like oh the pokemon turns to like the skyscraper <laughs> but in terms of like competitive like like gimmicks or whatever it's the best mechanic they've had aside from mm. terrestrialization because you know you get bonus health so you're tankier you can't be flinched um and you gain access to max moves which have all these different effects so it's like you can make your team you know tankier with like max ooze which is like the poison version or max steel um or you can do you know more offensive things like setting up the sun for your fire type to do by using max fire or whatever Mm. um so there's all these different like ways to use it and stuff which i didn't really recognize until i started watching like vgc content and that made me have have a a better appreciation for it even though i think visually it's a stupid gimmick um but yeah um so i watched a lot of that and then this generation i was like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna get into vgc um and i actually for the first series because the way it works for online ranked is each month is a season but then they have different series with and each series has a different rule set so series one was you can use any pokemon in the pokedex but you can't use paradox pokemon or legendaries um and that was like all of December and January. And then February 1st, it went over to series two. So now Paradox Pokemon are allowed, but still no legendaries. Um, so in series one, I actually managed to like, I built a team like all on my own. And I actually got up to like rank like 750 mm-hmm. on the on the ladder. Dang, it's is, not bad. I feel like that's kind of impressive. Yeah. Um, so There's got to be a lot of people competing. 750. That's triple yeah. digits. ain't bad. Yeah. So, um, Season two, we don't we don't talk about that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I finished like forty nine thousand. <laughs> hey, see if you finished forty nine thousand in season two and seven fifty in season one, definitely yeah. shows that you you did really well. So that's cool. Yeah, um, but yeah, so like 
that that shows me that I it, I can potentially at least do it well yeah. enough. Um, so I am going to try and get to that Charlotte regional in I think it's March, March 24th to, through the 26th. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I think so it's, I'm excited I think it's great. for the future. Yeah. You should totally, you should totally give that a try. I would be curious to see how that goes. I, I'd be even curious to go just to like be like a viewer. Cause I assume they would do a little bit, you know, I, I assume those things are kind of like convention style too, where it's more than mm -hmm. just the event. Like they'll probably have like people having like kiosks and stuff, selling things, probably like a merchant floor. That's cool to know that it's here in Charlotte. Yeah. And I think with that one, th I guess with most regionals, but I know with that one specifically, they're doing all three. So you have the, the actual like VGC game, you have the card game and then you have Pokemon oh, go. Oh, fun. Um, yeah. So you could go there and like, you know, trade cards with someone or something. Maybe I don't yeah. know. <clears throat> yeah. I totally, yeah. Had to, totally had to check that out. Well, that's cool. Uh, so then, okay. So we'll take a little bit step back. We're going to, okay. we're going to bounce a little questions uh, about you again. Still okay. Pokemon related. Uh, so the first one, if you were a Pokemon type or combination, has to Ooh. still just be two, wh what do you think your type would be? Ooh, that's a good one. Thanks. <laughs> um, probably Ghost. Mm. And... Hmm. I guess Ghost Electric. Ooh, I really, okay. I really, I really like the electric type. I really like the ghost type. Um, and I think it's a cool combination too. Yeah. Are there ghost like, electrics uh, out there? Rotom. I think that might oh, actually be the only that one. Might be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Bro, that'd be cool. Course, yeah. Ghost and, and what's electric. cool about Rotom is it has levitate. So it's immune to ground types. Gosh. Don't you just love electric type Pokemon that have levitate? Like Electros? Know, right? it's, it's like the greatest yeah. thing ever. You're I like, know, oh, right? well, I'm undefeatable. I guess I'm immune now. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah. So then, okay, now let's let's think. So close your eyes. Okay. Imagine yourself. Close. You are now a video game character. You are standing there on a route waiting <laughs> for a child to walk by. He presses the A button on you. What do you say? What would be your NPC dialogue if you were in a game? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I have to default to something Youngster Joey would say, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's got Rattata. What would I have? Like, <laughs> I don't even know. My Teddy Ursa is in the top percentage of Teddy Ursa. <laughs> And then you battle him with like a level 100 Teddy Ursa that has yeah, like max IVs. Yeah, was actually the first Pokemon I ever got to level 100 in Gen 2. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Durst that's Ring's like my my ace in Gen 2. Oh, that's really cool to know. I, didn't, I don't, honestly can't say I've ever used that Pokemon in uh, in battles. I think I've used it in the card game in one deck that I made, but I don't, I've never, I, I love, <laughs> I shiny hunted Teddy Ursa and Arceus. That was a fun one. I do like the oh, green. Nice. It's, a, it's a cute little little teddy yeah. bear for sure. Yeah, I like it too. Um, yeah, my Ursa Ring was kind of terrible technically though in Gen 2. So before Gen 4, um, Gens 1 through 3, every type was assigned either physical damage or special damage. So even though Fire Punch is like, you know, it's like a physical move technically, it still does special damage because it's a fire type move. And my Ursa Ring knew Strength, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, and Ice Punch. <laughs> what a chad. So, so even people. though it's a physical attacker, it had three special moves <laughs> <laughs> in Gen 2. So, what an ace. An yeah. ace in the hole, everybody. And then its fourth move was Strength, <laughs> because oh I didn't God. have a Pokemon to teach HM4. <laughs> Gosh, how can we just take a moment to appreciate the fact that HMs don't exist anymore? It's, I know. I mean, it's Urban so Mystica, nice. HM. <laughs> Yeah, really. That that yeah. that is the new style. I'm so yeah. glad that they got rid of those. I'm yeah, I'm a too. little annoyed that moves like TMs aren't unlimited again. You have to like craft yeah. them again. I think. Yeah, I personally that's not think as crafting bad as is kind of meh. But being like once and then done, though. Oh gosh, yeah. It's yeah. We're not going back to square one at least. It's just, yeah, having them unlimited it's, was just so convenient. Yeah, it was. I feel like for those who were making competitive Pokemon too, it was like really convenient because they only had to like get a TM once. I well, yeah. 
I mean, yeah. now I, I do know some people were um, creating their teams via methods, um, uh. <laughs> but those who you know are actually doing them like legitimately yeah. having unlimited TMs is is definitely a pretty big perk. Um, yeah. So okay, then you're talking about Earthring. Who is mm-hmm. your favorite Pokemon, or maybe like top five? Because you know, <sighs> favorites tough. So you know, if yeah, you go for like a top five or something. We can go for that too. Yeah, it is tough because it's like I love Pikachu. Like who doesn't? But like, yeah. I love Pikachu. I've had. I don't know if you, I'm sure you've seen my streams before where like I had Pikachu in the background, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I've had that since I was like seven or eight. So oh, that's cool. He's he's still sitting on the table next to me. What's oh, up, that's cute. buddy? Um, <laughs> so like, you know, it, it's hard for me to not say Pikachu, but yeah. then also Ursaring because like first Pokemon I ever got to level 100. Yeah. It was like my ace in Gen 2, which is strange because like usually the starter is my ace for almost every generation. Um, so Ursaring is definitely like special. And also just quick fun fact. Um, I think some early releases of Generation 2 in America um, – something with like the code was wrong or something where Don fan is supposed to be in silver and Ursaring is supposed to be in gold, but I played through silver um, and Ursaring was in it. And there's like a, there was like a small production timeline where like that error was like a thing. So oh, <laughs> technically, that's cool. Technically my ACE in another universe is Don fan, not Ursaring. Interesting. Um, yeah. That's cool. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, so Pikachu, Ursaring. Um, who else? I really like Torterra. Got a lot of fondness for Torterra. Finally, thank you. Yes. I love Torterra. No one talks right? about... Dude. He's so cool. Do you think Torterra Earthquake was so epic? Oh, my God, I yeah. love that. Po- he, literally, Torterra is my favorite starter. Um, Turtwig is oh, my wow. favorite starter. Yeah. I never hear anybody say that Torterra is one of their tops. That is really yeah. cool to hear. Yeah, I love the Turtwig line. Like, definitely my favorite Gen 4 starter, for sure. It's, if you um, see a shiny, it's shiny is really cool, too. Yeah, I'm going to look it up real, bit, real quick. But yeah, it's, I think I know. It's like bluish kind of, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. Turtwig looks better, for sure. Like, I don't know why Torterra went back to being more of like oh, a yeah, greenish, it's, it's but green, yeah. Yeah, the, the Turtwig though, Turtwig and Grottle oh. have like such good shinies. Yeah, even Grottle's blue. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, yeah Turtwig's it's... yeah. Um, what's funny about that too is you know, um Shining Pearl Brilliant Diamond or whatever um came out and I got them and then I was I was gonna stream them and I was like, all right, we're doing a full shiny run. Like I'm not getting my starter yeah. unless he's shiny. <laughs> I did like 200 resets in one stream and then I never played the games again. <laughs> Yeah, so, I tried doing the kind, same thing. Kind of a waste of money, but oh well. Um, yeah, I love Torterra mostly because it's a cool Pokemon, but also when I played through Gen 4 the first time, um, I made sure that Torterra, like, Torterra never went down. Like, I, I never lost a battle. And even if, like, all my other Pokemon, like, fainted, Torterra never fainted. So it literally was, like, my ace. It was, yeah. like, my go to. So. Love Torterra. Um, two more if I had to pick. Uh, it's actually really tough. Um, I don't know if I actually could pick two more. So I might just hey, that's leave fine. it there. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So you got Ursaring, you got Torterra, I got Pikachu. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we, uh, we're we done with the questions of this sort. Uh, okay. Now... It is time to move on to something a little bit new. Uh, I I actually don't know if you'll hear this. The listeners will. Okay. Just be careful. This could be loud. But it is right. now time for the special game show ver- part of this interview. Ooh. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. All right. Nice. I was like dancing in my chair. <laughs> All right, so contestant <laughs> Joe awesome. the Joe, if you get the question right, you will hear. If you okay. get it wrong, you will hear. Okay. Pretty pretty simple. Uh, I'll be tallying up the points. It's kind of like whose line points don't really matter, but still, it's it's, it's fun to do. <laughs> okay. uh, I found this test very randomly. I am not going to attest to how great of a test of 
random questions to say, but we're going to go for it anyway. So, okay. Joe, question number one. How many shapes slash forms can an unknown be? Can it be 25, 26, 27, or 28? 28. The alphabet, question mark, and exclamation point. Atta boy. Okay. Yeah. Not, not too bad. I actually don't know if any of these are like super difficult or not, so we'll see. <laughs> um, which move does the most damage? Hyperbeam, explosion, V create or self destruct? Explosion. Yeah. Very nice. I actually kind of thought it was self destruct. It, that's a weaker version of explosion, which is, it's weird oh. that they made two versions of the same move. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Some of these and are, how do you, yeah. some of these questions yeah. are if they're spelled correctly, but I, I'm not about to do that. That's, that's weird. <laughs> uh, okay. Which one is not a generation one move? Okay. Try attack, egg bomb, yawn, mimic. Yawn. He's unstoppable, folks. We are three <laughs> for three right now. I have uh, my hat turned backwards. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one's, man, that one's like really easy. Uh, okay, which is a pure steel type? Larion, Bisharp, Steelix, or Reggie Steel? Reggie Steel. <clears throat> Can't trick this man, folks. Four <laughs> for four. Um, that's another spelling correctly. That's kind of weird. Question five. Name every Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here for a while. That one will definitely get me, though. <laughs> uh, oh, this one. Okay, this is another easy. Man, this quiz is kind of easy. Uh, what does the cherry berry do? Uh, cure freeze, cure paralysis, cure um, the confusion, or nothing? Cures paralysis. Oh my gosh, folks. You cannot be beaten. I'm about to just look up a random Pokemon and start describing it. Do it. Random Pokemon. Uh, random Pokemon generator. Give me all gens, baby. Go for it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this Pokemon has... Four total toes, question mark on if these are actual toes. <laughs> and I can't see because the image is really small, but potentially one, two, three, four, eight different or eight total fingers. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is an four. early gen Pokemon. Four potential toes and eight <laughs> potential fingers. I just want to play the wrong sound. That's really all I'm going for. <laughs> so would you say first half of the national decks? Like Gen 1 through 4? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a couple, you know, guesses. You're good. You can ask yeah, some, let's, some let's questions. See, let's see. Is it from Gen 1 or 3? Uh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm also looking up hard Pokemon trivia. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably just try Dex entries, honestly. Oh, um, that's a good one. What the heck only has four <laughs> fingers on each hand? If it has hands, <laughs> Gen 1 through... Or one or three. Um, is it a dual type? Uh, I I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> I'm on a different screen right now, but I, I'm pretty sure this one is not. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay. no, 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 it's not. Okay. I swear, if you. I think. This. I think this is wrong because I think this has six, but I'm gonna go for it. Is it Grumpig? No, nah, that's a really good okay. guess, though. <laughs> Honestly, let me look at Grumpig. Uh, you were pretty close. He has three on each hand. So, unfortunately, oh, it. <laughs> really, was it a wrong question? I kind of just threw some red on uh, it. was Magmar. Oh, yeah. okay. But you were, you were really close. You're literally off by one digit <laughs> per hand. That was not bad at all. Yeah. Okay, 
Let's try another hardest quiz of all time. A lot of these hard quizzes are actually a joke. People are just like, <laughs> what's Pikachu's right. Pokemon type? <laughs> yeah. like, what? How is this a hard question? <laughs> um, okay, fine. Random Pokedex number. Let's just do that. See if you can figure out a Pokedex number. Um, oh, this is actually kind of fun. It prefers hot and humid environments. It is quick at capturing prey with its vines. Ooh. This could be like anything. I'm going to say Tangela. Ooh, eels. <laughs> uh, it is Bellsprout. What vines? <laughs> You know, it's got a little bit of vines at the bottom. Hey, uh, you mean it's toes? <laughs> Shaman.in slash Pokemon slash Dex does not lie, bro. <laughs> I also have no, this could only be a Gen 1 thing. I, I have no idea. So maybe, maybe just go for Gen 1 thoughts. Uh, okay, okay, here we go. Okay. The infant rarely ventures out of its mother's protective pouch until it's three years uh, old. Kangaskhan. Nice, nice. If, if that was like actually, it's Chansey. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> um, okay, wait. This isn't only Gen One. Volcanoes erupt when it barks. Unable to restrain its extreme power, it races headlong around the land. Oh, you got this. The key is in the beginning. Yeah. When it barks, I know this, but it's like what Pokemon? <laughs> like I want to say Entei but does Entei bark <laughs> like ah, shoot I swear I heard this like last week too because I was watching like a video or something that mentioned it um all right Need an right, answer. I'm going uh, to just say Entei. Survey says. Hey, oh, good wow. job, dude. Entei barks, I guess. I don't know. Apparently to the Pokedex entry it does. Right. Um, oh, yeah. This is not just Gen 1. All okay. of its fur dazzles if danger is sensed. It flees while the foe is momentarily blinded. And I can hmm. I can give you a hint on this one if you, if you do need it. I can you give me the generation? Um, I can. Uh, I guess I gotta look it up myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. It is four. Four. Ooh. Okay. That's not what four. I was thinking. So hmm. I'm gonna say Pachirisu. Ooh. It oh. is Shinx. Oh, it makes so much sense too. I know. I, Dang it. I actually was thinking about Legends Arceus regarding the like mm. it flees stuff because I do know that like uh. sometimes they can flee if uh, they'll like they'll hit you with lightning and then like run away, which is kind of interesting uh, okay. that they put that into the game. Yeah, uh, cool. All right. We will do. Let's do two more. So this okay. one says it uses the horns on its heads to sense human emotions it is said to appear in front of cheerful people. Oh, I know this one. Shoot. Togepi. Ooh. It's Rolfs. Those aren't horns? What? Yeah, they're horns, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> they're like hey, you try pulling those things off. It'll get mad. <laughs> now, I'm kind of surprised by the it appears to cheerful people because I was pretty happy and it took me hours to get Ralts in Pokemon Emerald. <laughs> Thank you very much. True. Um, this, wait, this, the name of it is in the thing. That doesn't work at all. I'll just read it because it sounds fun. It uses a fun word. Claydol is an enigma that appeared from a clay statue made by an ancient civilization dating back 20,000 years. This Pokemon shoots beams from both its hands. That's actually kind of epic. Are those hands, though? You know, <laughs> which one's the eye? It's just a lot going on with Claydol yeah. that doesn't make too much sense. <laughs> but it's kind of cool that he was made from clay. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. Last one. All right. It anchors itself by wrapping twigs with the silk from its body. It's motionlessly awaits evolution. Do not assume that this is a Gen 1. I will give you that hint because this really sounds yeah. like a Metapod or something. <laughs> it is not. I'll say that much. Not not a Gen 1 person. So it anchors itself by wrapping twigs around from the silk in its body. It motionly awaits evolution. Hmm. I want to. Uh, I guess I'll go with. I got to make sure I get the name right. I think it's. It's like Scatterbugs Evolution, which I think is Spupa, I think. So you're is that your final yeah, answer? That, that'll be my answer. It is Silcoon. Ah, uh, I wouldn't have expected that at all. Yeah, I, you know, I was because Silcoon and Cascoon are so similar. I was like, oh man, I hope he mm -hmm. says one of them. Like, if he says one of them, I was just gonna give right. it to you. But yeah, yeah, it's it's one of those things like where I look at the Pokemon and I I get it because I do know that mm -hmm. Silcoon and Cascoon were definitely Gen 3's version of you know Metapod yeah. and Kakuna and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't don't normally think of that Pokemon as waiting motionlessly to evolve because I also remember that that Pokemon did have moves. Like you could get a Silcoon or a Cascoon with more than just Harden. Yeah. So I the thing that threw me off was the wrapping itself in sticks. Like, oh it yeah. It just sits there. Like Spupa has like that whole like cloak around it. I'm like, oh, and it's got like all this confetti looking stuff in it. That's got to be it. Yeah, that's a hey, so, that's a good education guess. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, let's see, tallying everything up. You got one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. You got seven right and five wrong, which not too okay. bad, honestly, yeah. for just I'll, doing I'll random it. Pokedex entries. It was pretty right. solid. So that was our, our game. So segment, I will uh, lead us off with another little jingle because I really like this. Oh yeah. Pokemon trivia, baby. Sweet. Well, uh, that's going to conclude our interview section of Who's That Interviewee of the podcast. Joe, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, if people want to find you on, I don't know, whatever platform you feel like people should find you on, whether it be you know, Twitter or YouTube or whatever you want, uh, <laughs> where could someone find you? And if you don't want people to find you, that is totally <laughs> fine as well. <laughs> Like, yeah, you can find me at my house at a. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my address, my social, yeah. my phone number. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you for having me. First of all, this is a lot of fun. Um, and I guess if you want to follow me, um, Joe the Joe Nine on Twitter. Um, it's literally just the words Joe the and Joe and the, the number nine. Um, so yeah. Other than that, you can't really find me anywhere else. I'm not really on Facebook or YouTube or anything really yeah, mysterious um, man. So yeah, Joe, man of the mysterious, mysterious Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks um, again. Appreciate it. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. So I'd be down in the future to come back and redeem myself on some of those questions or whatever, or ask yeah. you questions. Yeah. As the interviewee. There we do go. A little, do a little reverse. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, <laughs> I will now turn things back over to, uh, solo talking podcast Tyler so Tyler take it away all right so there we have it uh thank you again to Joe for joining me and just chatting about some some fun Pokemon stuff I do really appreciate it uh he was the first person that I interviewed so it's pretty exciting to kind of kick off the dream that I have for this podcast um so again thank you very much Joe and thank you to you the listener right now for listening to this uh to this podcast uh, the Chatting Chat Tot brought to you by Calling All Nerds. <laughs> uh, yeah, we super appreciate it, though. Thank you very much for, for tuning in. As always, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Twitch, TikTok, honestly, everywhere, at Mr. T. Nader. Also, be sure to follow Calling All Nerds on YouTube and Twitter as well. And with that, we're going to end the podcast. So thank you all very much. Hope you have a good one, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.